Well, listen, there's been a lot of focus on the presidential race, but what you should know is the other race alongside the presidential is the parliamentary race. And here I am in the lawmaking chamber. And listen, this is what you should know. By the end of the seventh parliament, the period between 2017 and 2020, the NPP held a strong majority with 169 seats compared to the NDC's 106 seats. What did this mean for the NPP? It gave them the majority, putting them on the right-hand side of the speaker and the NDC on the left. But then, in the 2020 election, this balance was shaken. The NPP lost 32 seats in that election, and the NDC gained 31. The NPP lost seats in areas like you know, the uh, central region, in the greater Accra region, where they lost nine seats. In the central region, they lost seven seats. And all of these seats, guess where they went? To the NDC. But the NDC also lost some two seats in the Savannah region. Uh, that we know for sure. These seats were picked up by the NPP uh, as well. But there were no changes in certain areas. And I'm talking about the Western North region. I'm talking about the Northern region. I'm talking about the Ahafo region. Those areas did not experience any changes at all. Now, what happened to that parliament of 2020? The parliament we see now, it became a, the historic hung parliament. 137 seats for the NPP on one side and 137 for the NDC on the other side. Then the question then is, how did the NPP become the majority? The Fomena MP made all the changes. He broke the deadlock because this independent candidate broke away from the NPP after he was expelled by the party before the election, won his seat, but decided to align with the ruling party, giving the, the NPP that slim majority in the eighth parliament. Now the big question. What will the balance of power look like when the clock strikes, strikes midnight on January 6, 2025 for the ninth parliament? It's not that easy to say. I know polls have suggested that the NDC could secure a majority with at least 150 seats. And that will shift you know, them to the speaker's right, right hand side, right here. But it wouldn't be that easy because we see a surge in independent candidates in this election. 111 independent candidates are contesting, and they are contesting in key regions like the Ashanti, like the Central, and even the Volta region. And that could complicate the outcome of the parliamentary race we're going to see in the 2024. You know, polls. And I'll give you an example. The incumbent NPP MP for Agona West is now running independently. Now, if multiple formula style access okay, all we are going to see that is that a clear majority will elude either party. And that is why the balance of power in this election is unpredictable, Alfred. So it certainly is unpredictable. And we'll see how things play out three days away from today on December 7 here on your election commenter it's quite clear um, what we have seen with this with the swing at the regions and the swing constituencies and then also this hung parliament as we have it and everything that is giving to us we'll see whether the Ghanaian voters would also be on that same path to either have a swing and then also a hung parliament again or have another full majority and a minority. Roland Walker is out and about engaging people uh, three days ahead of election day, December 7, to test the pulse and expectations of the people. Roland, what have they been telling you? Well, certainly. So we're coming to you live, as already indicated from the yes, studio, right here, yeah. just around the, the Tetequashi interchange area just close right. to the uh, uh, Accra Mall. Certainly, it's a beehive of activity. We have a number of people who have also turned the place into some trading areas. And you know that issues about um, making or eking a living have always been paramount when it comes to many of the issues. I want to speak to a number of people and uh, who want to gauge what their own concerns are on what benchmarks would they be using. The polls are stating that education will be a key issue economy will be a key issue access to health infrastructure and unemployment all right so let me quickly just start and see whether i'll get some uh, few 
uh, madam please come yeah. as well and then also let me have you as well uh, what's your name in the first place uh, my name is Akwesi Adei Kukuru okay and yeah. then you as well my name is Hannah Bedua okay Hannah Bedua where do you live I live at Kwashiman. Kwashiman, oh, uh, not just here? Yes. Okay, great. But uh, I already see that. Why did you go for campaign? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in creative arts. Okay. And we are support creative arts. We have a lot of artists okay. supporting uh, and, and this. Okay, so. so I just happen to have met you here. That's exactly, cool. Yeah. Okay, but, but what would be the key benchmarks for you, your first three? that you will use, the sectors that you think that maybe have ha, have been um, well developed or need to be better developed for you to make that choice on yeah, Saturday? Um, these are the things I'm looking at, education-wise. Mm. Um, the MPP came and said free education. It's nice. It's, it's very nice. But at the end of the day, we think the implementation, I believe the kids are suffering because we are all parents. Mm. And our kids come to us every weekend, daddy. And they are any new and all those things. Then we send money to them again. So we think we believe in what Mahama is saying. Okay. He already built uh, e blocks all around. And now he's saying even the procurement of uh, food will, be, will not be by only one side, he's okay. going to decentralize it. Wow. So we believe that uh, with Mahama's policies, the free SHS will be better. All right. To the economy. The economy. One is to four now. It's one to one. Well, one is to four now. It's one is to seventeen. Look at this. The teachers are suffering. Nurses are dying. Everybody is suffering. Market women are suffering. The whole. And everybody can, nobody can say, say we are not suffering. It's not easy. Petro, look at it. Everywhere. So education, economy. No idea converted person. Thank you very much. Okay, you are Thank you very much. Let me speak to you. What basically do you do? Um basically I am a business administrator. Okay, you're a business. So it means you work in an office. Yes, I do. Um but as a normal person, um you're you're a fam you or you belong to a family, you're a family person or you fend for yourself. No, I believe I belong to a family. So so you tell me how okay or difficult is life um i mean sincerely. working making your money and how you spend it whether you're okay you're not okay sincerely life is difficult life is difficult as compared to our income and our expenses is too much why are you making the choice you're making no no uh papa Ro, yes sir i think that you I even know my name yeah, of okay, course. Okay, great. I so so why are you making the choice you're making? No, no. Uh, looking at the situation in the country now, it makes it very... It's in a, inevitable. The change is inevitable. So we can't help but to come in and help the JDM and NDC to win this coming election. Because the economic situation and the corruption, the looting of the properties and land all over the country, it makes it very imperative for civil society groups to come in to help the NDC to make it a one to elect for a John Tamani to win the 2024 election. What will you vote? Around Iowa Southeast. Iowa Southeast. Iowa Southeast. Iowa Southeast. Iowa Southeast. Your friends around you, I, I think you have uh, the ruling party friends, MPP friends as yes, well. Yes, certainly I do. Yeah. Um, what, what, why are they insisting on voting for their party? Since you're all politicians or you're just... Uh, yeah, yeah and I understand. Some of them, when you talk to them, you get a feeling or you, 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 you sense that they themselves are not happy with the party. But you see, for the fact that your party member mm. and the, the party losing is painful. So some of them are there. That's why you see that some backtracking like Alan Chamartin mm. and all that groups and things. So at the moment, Everybody, look, if you meet 10 Ghanaians on the street, yeah. eight of them are willing to vote for MPP and John Damani Mama to come and save the country at the moment. The, the government needs to work on new policies. Mm. Apart from that, they need to make sure they manage the economy very well. Things are very bad. Mm. Mm. Everywhere you pass, people are complaining about the system. Because previously, things that we were buying at a certain amount is now very high that people are no more able to afford. 
and it's making the system so bad and everybody is just complaining. So good management of the economy is all that we want assistance. So, the, so for you, that's a, a key area for you? Very, very important. Um, I ask you, Scanner, are you a family man or do you look, look after others? I'm not a family man. But you look after others? But I have kids that I look after. Oh, okay, yeah. so it, it, which will be the next um, sectors you think that um, will be the sectors you benchmark to vote for your candidate on Saturday? Personally, you know, I want a candidate who will come to power, right? And be able to work on our roads for us. So roads. Our, our road. To work is very, very bad. Road, See, road and transport. We want a system whereby these people will come to power and be able to consider our inner community roads. Very, very important. I want a system whereby each time, each morning, when I move out of my house, I'm able to drive on a good road to be able to hit the highways before I go and do whatever business I'm going to do. I don't want a system whereby I wake up in the morning, drive on a very bad road before I get to what? The main roads in town. It is very bad. We don't need systems like that. The fact that these are our leaders, they are always constantly getting the opportunity to travel out there. They see the good things in the other countries, but they are not able to bring many things in this country. Those monies can be used for all these good roads that we are yearning for in this country. Uh, but you're not saying innovation. We, we, we are saying innovation. We are saying all the commissions, but we are talking about inner community roads. Inner community roads. The roads are very bad. When you come to Tema, for instance, the road network within a Shaiman community, Ponkatamansu community, is very, very bad. It's as if we don't have a government. It's as if we don't have a DCE in the country. That's it. And then which other sectors again will be the key benchmark for you uh, to choose a the, candidate? The, the, the fact is I, I, I want the system whereby they work very well on our educational system, particularly That's free the, the, the secondary school. The fact is uh, a lot of the students are complaining. I took my niece to school not long ago and then uh, fine, tuition was not paid all right, but then you notice that when you get to school, there are a whole lot of fees that you'll be asked to pay. Which are not formal. Very good. Before we left the school, we spent about 2,500 cities. Was it a, f a, a, a category A school, category B school? A category B school. But then before we left the school, we spent about 2,500 Ghana cities over there. So then any government that will come to power next should be able to work on these free HS. They are complaining about the food that they get on campus. They said it's not enough, it's not nutritious. I mean, a whole lot.